What's up everyone? Welcome to the Durbin Compound. If you're joining me for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. In today's video, we're doing a tool review. This is on the Husqua, Husqvarna K4000. Uh, if you are looking at purchasing one of these, you're definitely going to watch this video. Don't buy until you've heard my opinion about it. It might get long-winded. It depends on how mad I get during this video. So if you're interested in what I have to say, stay tuned. All right, guys, so if you're joining us for the first time and you don't know who I am, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm a renovation contractor. So I do a lot of uh, self-sufficient videos. I do a lot of tool reviews and I keep it real. So most everything, I don't think I've been given uh, a tool in a long, long time. That's a shame. But uh, this Husqvarna was purchased with my own money. Uh, this saw was only intended to cut concrete slabs in basements where I couldn't operate a gas saw. So I had to have a battery or a, uh, a battery powered or a plug-in saw. And so I had done a previous video on the Milwaukee nine inch battery powered cutoff saw and that didn't cut it for what I wanted. So I thought this was the ticket. I was horribly wrong. So I've had nothing but problems with my K4000 from the very first, uh, from the very first go at it. Uh, we cut a, a doorway out. A customer had already cut like half of a doorway out of a basement wall, and basically was missing the cuts. Um, he was cutting from both sides, and he was missing the cuts. So he hired us to come in. I had the K4000 brand new. I'm like, let's give it a shot to get the cuts right. So we cut with it for about an hour before it started cutting out. So we were uh, sawing with it vertically, so holding the saw, sawing with it vertically. Um, from, from minute one, it was popping a 20 amp circuit breaker, a dedicated circuit to this saw. So I think this saw says 15 amps. So from very beginning, probably the first five minutes, I popped a 20 amp breaker dedicated to this saw. So I'm already a little frustrated because I've got the homeowner, you know, I, I'm showing up for a higher job. It already sucks to go in and work in other people's homes. So you want everything to go according to plan, right? And I'm like, well, you just stand up there by the circuit breaker panel and keep flipping it back on. And so obviously, if you don't know anything about electric, once we heat the breaker up, it will just keep popping back and back and back and back. So it's it's not like it got any better. So uh, eventually we got to a point where this all just wouldn't run anymore. The breaker wasn't popping, um, this GFCI was popping. So I'm like, okay, well maybe something got wet. But we're operating it vertically, so it's not like water was running down in the saw, water was running down the wall. So it's not even like we were wet. Uh, so frustrated with it on day one. So I was like, well, we'll just take it home. And we got the job done. I ended up using a rotary hammer and uh, just taking a rotary hammer and going down through the crack with a small bit all the way around. And then we ended up getting it freed by a sledgehammer and the rotary hammer. This tool did not make it happen. So bought this for that exact reason to get something out of a bind or where I would operate a gas saw didn't make it happen. So second time around, I let the saw, I let the saw uh, dry out and it seemed to be working fine. So next job, I had to cut a small piece of asphalt to re-concrete a curb outside. Like I said, I'm a renovation contractor. I don't use a saw every day. I, when I need it, I depend on it and I need it to work when I'm using it. So I go to cut this concrete. Uh, I cut the asphalt back maybe an inch. Really smooth asphalt, nice. You know, this thing eats asphalt for breakfast. It just went right down through and made my nice cut. Maybe five feet, I had to trim it up for this curb that we were pouring, re-pouring. Okay, so cut that. So then I go out the back of the house and we're redoing a concrete step. I go to fire it up to, I forget what I was cutting. I needed to cut something with this. I'd go to fire, uh, excuse me, Whew. I go to fire it up and doesn't work. So I test the outlet. 
it has 120 volts or 125 volts AC. I put my oscilloscope on it because I had my oscilloscope in the truck. So I put my Fl Fluke 123 oscilloscope on it, 60 Hertz, exactly what this thing is required to use. It was there and the GFCI wasn't, it was actually set. It was fine. It wasn't popping. No trigger pull, nothing. Didn't work. Okay, so I literally had just used it at the front of the house. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll plug into that cord. Maybe there's something crazy with it. Still doesn't work. Okay, well, now we have an issue with the saw. So I go back to my tool dealer where I bought this and we send it back to Husqvarna. They replace all of the GFCI guts through the saw. Okay, great. I got a new saw back from Husqvarna. This is going to be awesome. So, you know, replace the whole guts and everything. So I go into the third project with this saw and we're cutting a concrete slab in a basement. And this thing is absolutely trash. <laughs> yes, it says 15 amps. And the reason why I just brought up 15 amps is because we had this plugged into a dedicated circuit at the power panel and had it running, you know, had a 20 amp dedicated breaker to this saw and I could not even let the weight off of the saw before it cut out in the cut. I couldn't even let the weight down on the blade for it to overload the circuit and pop it. So something's gotta be wrong with this saw to where the 15 amps, apparently 15 amp motor, is popping the, the 20 amp breaker. So have a guy stationed at the breaker panel again. Now it's one of my employees, I'm paying for the breaker to be reset. So I say, stand by the breaker panel every time it reset or every time it pops, I'm going to just get back in the cut. So I'm in a slurry, we're trying to cut out for a bathroom drain, we're trying to cut out for a shower, okay? Every time it pops the circuit breaker, it also pops the G, you have to reset the GFCI. So lay the saw down, you get tired of holding this heavy saw up out of the cut so it doesn't, it doesn't crap out on you. So lay it down in the cut, pops a breaker. That means that every time the breaker gets reset, this needs to be reset. So you reach over, click it reset. Must have done it about 30 times on the 20 amp breaker to where I was like, go get a 30 amp breaker out of the truck. We're gonna wire this into a 30 amp breaker right at the panel. I'm not messing around. So I thought, well, let's take it a step further and let's just measure the amperage at what we're doing here. Maybe there's something going on where it's popping, you know, GFCI, but it's not popping this. It's popping the breaker at the panel. And so we go ahead and measure it and with the saw running barely in the cut, we're measuring around 20, 21 amps at the breaker. Okay, that's a little weird. It's a 15 amp saw, right? Should be running a piece of cake, okay? If I set it down in the cut, spikes to 28 amps. Okay, there's something wrong there. And no wonder the breaker was tripping at 28 amps. So I, didn't, I wasn't even running the saw hard. It took me all day to cut something that should have taken me less than 10 minutes to cut. And so it's absolutely dumbfounding. Okay, so, okay, we're still cutting. We're putting up with the breaker issue. I have a 30 amp breaker wired now. It's running, I'd say, a couple minutes at a time before the breaker is overheated and pops. So this 15 amp saw is now popping a 30 amp dedicated breaker on a 10 gauge extension cord that isn't very long, just enough to get us, you know, the 20 feet from the breaker panel. And so, I'm frustrated with it and it shocks me. <laughs> so now this all is shocking me. Okay, so now we have an issue with the GFCI. Shocked me enough that the, uh, that the GFCI popped. Okay, and I'm just wet with slurry at this point. So something physically is wrong with the saw. So I'm like, okay, well maybe it got dirty inside and maybe, you know, it, it's, you know, I, I don't know. So I'm gonna let it cool, I'm gonna wipe it down. I wiped it down with the towel, got it all dried out. We blew it out with air. I pick it up the next time to try to cut with some more. It literally shocked me so bad that I dropped the saw. And my employee was like, whoa, what happened? And they're like, I literally just got shocked all the way through my body by the saw. GFCI popped again. So I've discontinued use from it. 
guess what Husqvarna says? They want to argue through email saying that, you know, nothing's wrong with the saw and that I must have had it plugged into an ungrounded outlet. Well, that's a bunch of malarkey. Guess what? They only give you a 90 day repair warranty. So basically they give you a guaranteed piece of crap. Hey, if you want me to take a dump in a box and mark it guaranteed, I will. I've got spare time. So I have the Husqvarna rep email the email my tool guy and he, he says, oh, it must have been running off a generator. The only time we've ever seen somebody get shocked with it is off a generator uh, that's ungrounded. Tell him he needs to ground the generator. Well, if anything, above all else, I'm an electrical engineer and I know how electricity works and I know that something's messed up in here. If the saw is under warranty, well, I'd like Husqvarna to fix it. If I need to go in the saw and fix it, I'm gonna show you guys that I fixed the saw for Husqvarna and fix their problem and then we can just trash Husqvarna on YouTube because it's a guaranteed piece of crap. So I've been nothing but frustrated about this saw. I think this saw is like $1,500. You put a $200, $300 blade on it and you can't even do anything that it's designed to do. And then Husqvarna wants to wants to act like, you know, they're they're not going to stand behind their product 90 day, you know, warranty on their repair. Like come on. So you're saying that you give me a, a limited lifetime warranty? I don't even know what their original warranty is. All I know is that they only covered their repair for 90 days. Renovation contractor like me doesn't use this every 90 days. Needs it to work when it's supposed to work. So it's hard to not get frustrated with companies like Husqvarna where, yeah, I'm a penny holding up a dollar. It's one saw, but you're going to know about it, YouTube. My audience is going to know about it because I don't want anybody in my audience buying one of these saws. You're going to waste your money. So you know what I did? <laughs> I went to Harbor Freight and bought a bear. <laughs> Guess what's been cutting all my cuts? From now on, I've done two jobs with the bear. That's basically the same thing. It's the same exact saw. I put a new blade on it left this old blade on this one. My bear has been cutting just fine from Harbor Freight, plugged into the same outlets. Oh wow, we got the job finished with the bear. We didn't get the job finished with a Husqvarna K4000. If you're looking at purchasing this, you think, well, brand name, this would be awesome. Like, yeah, it'll hold up, it'll be, yep. I thought that too. And so far have nothing but negative things to say about Husqvarna. Yeah, they took the saw back and they warrantied it. Oh, I also didn't tell you that uh, the way they tell you to clean out this saw is literally to hold it up and run it full throttle and spray your spray the water from the hose directly down through the motor to clean out the arbor and everything. Yeah, that shocks you. I will, I can 100% guarantee that I got shocked twice from trying to do it like that. And that was back at the house. I was trying to clean it out. And yes, still shocked me and popped the GFCI. Forgot about that little detail. This thing is unsafe to use. We've discontinued use. It's basically just a paperweight. I might as well run it over with the truck. I mean, I, like what else can you do with it? I'm not going to take the liability of getting shocked again because... All right, I digress. See, I was getting a little bit off the reservation there. Uh, this saw is a guaranteed piece of crap. Do not go buy one. Uh, you'll be doing yourself a disservice. And I certainly have discontinued all use of this. It's just basically a paperweight now um, because Husqvarna won't stand by their product and they just want to argue when stuff some, something needs fixed with it, right? So if you're looking at getting one, just stay away. Go get a bear from Harbor Freight. Those work. I can, I can attest to that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I, sorry about my ranch there, but you know, you get frustrated when you spend over a thousand dollars on a tool and it doesn't do what you need it to do. Uh, and every time you get it out, there's a problem with it and you're tired of sending it back. All this stuff costs time and money. So it's really frustrating when you depend on a brand name tool and it's not there for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.